Hey guys, Derek Harris here again. This is a KTM 500 EXCF 2016 model. This applies to the 2012 through 2016 models. Today I'm going to show you it running at uh, various part throttle loads and wide open loads and you can listen to it and we'll compare that to this ECU that was in the motor. Out with the git and in with the other ECU that came with it.
So there you have a couple runs and just a couple different scenarios of throttle position. As you can see on the standard ECU, when you get into a certain range of throttle positions and RPMs, it pops and sputters really, really bad. I'm not quite sure how well that's going to pick up on camera, but uh, hopefully you guys can hear that. Essentially, it's just way too lean in those regions. Um, pops out the exhaust are an interesting phenomenon, and, and sometimes it's unburnt fuel, which is, is actually, I should say that's almost all of the time it's unburnt fuel. Uh, not even almost all of the time, all of the time it's unburnt fuel. So most people would think that that's rich, but when you get really, really lean, oftentimes you can't ignite it. And so uh, it's just not rich enough to combust. And then it gets its way into the exhaust and it gets hot and superheated and it manages to combust inside your exhaust system. So um, generally the two solutions to that, uh, and, and there's different ways though. Car manufacturers go about it a different way than usually we do in motocross or, or off-road motorcycles, but uh, you can actually supply no fuel so that that way you don't have any fuel in the exhaust system, or you can supply enough fuel that it will combust under part throttle uh, condition or no throttle conditions. and um, and in that scenario, you also get no pop. So usually in the motorcycle world, we're doing uh, the fuel delivery version and then getting the ignition values and, and uh, fueling values correct so that you don't get the pops. So you can, I don't know if it came out clearly on the video, but that's uh, clear as day, huge difference in park throttle drivability. Uh, power wise, they're, uh, with what that ECU is in there, it's not huge. I mean, we made very, very good power with the Git. We'll uh, show you guys that here in the dyno. We'll do a couple pulls for each with you. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, that ECU that's in the bike, it, it's close in the wide open fueling department and it's uh, not terrible on power. However, the GIT is a little bit better with where we have the tune-up at. Of course, we're, we're tuned specifically for that pipe in this combo. So uh, that gives us a little bit of advantage versus say if it, you know, it was on the stock pipe. So yeah, we're gonna give that a, a, a couple dyno power pulls for you. I'll do uh, fire up the laptop right now and, and show you guys that. And we'll swap, switch each ECUs and go back and forth and show you some uh, some power runs. So I'll do that right now, and uh, we'll go from there. Hey guys, had to do a voiceover here. Um, the fan was running for the dyno, and it was terrible. You couldn't hear the audio very good. So I've got the Git ECU in the bike right here. We shot this video a couple times, but unfortunately I had some customers show up, and then I also had a couple phone calls come in and had to take it over again. So... Uh, the bike has a Git ECU. We're going to switch to the OEM ECU very quickly after that, and we'll show you back-to-back -back as quickly as possible between the two for full power dyno runs. We've also got uh, uh, the timing really dialed, the fueling really dialed, and it's uh, going to run safe and cool. I know the computer real quick. I got the dyno drum still spin so that uh, I can pull off the brake, uh, save this data, make sure I got everything right. I gotta save all the four runs. Okay, so. Uh, you can see a best pole of 57.53 there, or that particular run. Let's see here, move some data. Four poles, one, two, three, four, and they all overlay really, really well. So very, very consistent. Um, now this is with the airbox cover installed, and actually this run here 
is with it removed. So that's something we wanted to also show you guys. We just did that before. I just did this, this pull for you guys. So that's the air box cover removed. That uh, can be attained or accomplished by drilling holes in your airbox, which are coming on the new production bikes. Our ECU is tuned to support enough fuel to do that. Um, so, you, you know, if you want to do that, you'll pick up that power. And uh, uh, look how nice and smooth this curve is. Nice, smooth torque curve. Uh, peaks around 7,000 on torque. Nice and smooth, no dips and jumps or anything like that. And rounds over. We've also, with the Git, we're able to raise the rev limiter to wherever we want or lower it to whatever we want. In this case, we've picked 10,000, which is a little bit above stock. If you hear it when it hits the rev limiter on the dyno, it also uh, hits it. it. It's a different manner of rev limit. So it doesn't abruptly cut off like the stock one does. The stock one's like a real hard, hard limit. And the Git is a, more of a soft limit. So I'm going to go throw this OEM ECU on. Always, I leave the dyno drum running a little bit on our last poles to uh, cool the brake. Right. Download data. The red test is uh, airbox cover removed uh, with the Git installed, and then the green is uh, the OEM ECU. Uh, pull up these last four, make sure we got repeatable data. Oops, hold on. So that's the last four poles. Um, all look good, consistent. Uh, 107 is actually the last of me. I screwed something up when I clicked this. Let me go back. Make sure we're at 107. Yep, graph. Make graph. Okay. And then so we've got 107 pulled up. One, two, three, four. Down here is the last pull with the git. All right. So as you can see, we made good gains all the way in the front. I mean, right there, that's uh, 36 foot pounds versus 34. That's 3384. So it's over one. That's 1 1.1 foot pounds. Right here, we've got a 3744 with the git, and we've got 36, so one and a half foot pounds. Right here, uh, as, it, as they're necking close to together here, it's still one and a half, uh, 1.2. And then right here, they're starting to dive, you know come together. Still a little bit better in the power department. And then as you can see, um, and now this little spike here is just what the dyno does when uh, we hit the rev limiter. It doesn't know how to record super accurately, especially with that really harsh rev limiter. Um, as you can see, we've got a little bit more RPM, 10,000. And uh, we can adjust that to whatever, but 10,000, we did all the calculations, is the upper end of the safe limit that we would want to sell these bikes at. But if you heard on video, there's a tremendous difference between the two rev limiters. Uh, when you hit it on the Git, it's a soft limiter. The bike will continue to pull if needed. So if you were in a, in a situation where, for whatever reason, you had to be on the rev limiter and you just didn't have an opportunity to shift, the Git's going to pull through there really well. But look at those torque gains. Those are those are massive gains. I mean, you're not going to find bolt-on parts, um, anything that can that can do that. So uh, that's a it's a really really big improvement. So we're real happy with that. Um, and then more importantly, as we showed earlier, all that part throttle drivability and the tunability, the scalability of this box, we're able to make you know tremendous gains. Um, if you want to mod your motorcycle out, which we'll actually be doing a feature on camshafts for these and for the newer model, 
uh, the Git allows us to scale with that. So uh, we can tune it to match all the needs of a modified motorcycle or a built motorcycle. We've got a really cool project going on with the 550 kit. I've been working on it, unfortunately, forever. Uh, it took a while to get some, some parts and pieces. Um, but we're almost done with that. I've got literally everything done. I just need to put it in a chassis and dyno it. So uh, that's going to be short. So that'll be cool. You can check that out. We've got a big bore kit for it, the 550 kit. That'll apply to both models, this model on the 12 to 16, and also apply to the uh, 17 to 19s. So we're working hard on that. And then the camshafts that, uh, the sh camshafts that I've got, actually, let me go grab one. So uh, actually, this is a camshaft we'll be using in our 550 build. This is a custom grind that we do. It's a regrind of an OEM that we uh, hard weld. And then um, after it's hard welded, it gets reground. And uh, we're, you know, we've got a couple test ones. I've got two more of these that we're gonna be going through to see what matches that bigger motor. But we've already been doing a lot of development and have something really good for just the 500s as it is. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. If you want more information on a Git ECU, please shoot us an email or check us out on the website, hpracedevelopment.com. If you have any more technical questions or something we didn't answer, feel free to ask me. We've we'll also got uh, more videos going to be dropping soon. We'll have even more data published for these things. We did a lot of air fuel testing just to, to get all our tuning right. We'll be publishing some more videos with that, and we'll also be publishing videos with our camshafts, our big bore build, and then other modifications you can do with this bike. So uh, stay up to date on this. We also have more videos dropping on just cool project bikes in the shop. We're going to have a lot of cool things coming in for 2020.